So I come from the Sainsbury Laboratory in Cambridge and our lab is particularly interested in understanding how microbial organisms, especially filamentous microbes, colonise plants. So the talk uh, that I'm going to give today is about our aim to try and identify plant traits that control microbial colonisation and I'm working on the crop plant barley. So this is a famous uh, painting that you've probably all seen before by Van Gogh which um, depicts a wheat field. And in this wheat field are probably lurking multiple different filamentous microbial pathogens, um, which will be very familiar to most of you here today. So um, septoria is a notorious wheat pathogen, uh, brown rust, powdery mildew, and yellow rust are wheat and barley pathogens, and these um, are all fungi and they cause really serious diseases in crops and can lead to massive yield losses every year. Um, so just a little bit about the lifestyles of these pathogens. Um, they all share something in common, so they all have a biotrophic lifestyle, um, which means that they feed off of living host tissue. Septoria is an exception in that it has a hemibiotrophic lifestyle overall, so it starts off biotrophic, feeding off living tissue, and then it um, transitions into its necrotrophic lifestyle and it kills host tissue. So because these diseases cause really serious um, yield losses in crops, people are really interested in looking into breeding resistance for, um, against these pathogens. And one of the ways that you can do this, and arguably a more durable way of mediating resistance to pathogens, is to look for structural or biochemical processes in plants that microbes employ to allow them to colonise plant tissue. Um, but the fungal pathogens that I mentioned on the previous slide are actually quite limited in their ability to help you find these processes. So um, they have long assay times, so if you work with them in the lab, I think septoria takes several weeks before you... Um, if you're doing an assay, screening some germplasm, I think it takes quite a long time to see um, differences in resistance. They're difficult to culture because um, of this biotrophic lifestyle they have. Um, the obligate biotrophs, such as the rusts, require living host tissue to, um, to reproduce, so they're difficult to culture in the lab. And the problem with them being um, narrow host range and really adapted pathogens is that if you do find any genes in the plants that control their colonisation, they may be very pathogen specific. So in this case here, um, this is uh, MLO is a protein in barley and when it's present, the pathogen is able to colonize the barley tissue. Um, you can see here, and if you knock out MLO, then the pathogen is no longer able to colonize the tissue. Um, and this is great if you want powdery mildew resistance in barley, but um, if you want resistance to um, the rusts, MLO can't help you. Um, so in our lab, we are pioneering the use of a different pathogen to try and identify uh, plant traits that control microbial colonisation. And the pathogen we're using is an umycete pathogen called Phytophthora palmivora, um, and there are some pictures of it here. Um, and we think that it will overcome some of the limitations of the fungal pathogens that, um, uh, for using the fungal pathogens that I mentioned on the first slide. So it infects different tissues, um, and this is great because it means uh, it infects not only roots but leaves um, and this might enable us to um, do some investigative studies in roots which have been missing so far um, from the literature uh, and do root, com root shoot comparisons to see whether traits that control microbial colonisation in roots are the same as those in shoots. It has a really rapid life cycle so um, you can do assays in the lab within a week. It's a hemibiotroph, so it shares many of the same lifestyle characteristics as the, the pathogens um, that are economically relevant to wheat and barley in the UK. Um, and we think that this means it'll help us identify traits in plants that um, will be relevant for these pathogens. And it's transformable, which is really important. So these pictures here are confocal microscope pictures um, of the pathogen we have in the lab expressing a red fluorescent protein. Uh, so this is a spore up here that's germinated and is penetrating barley tissue. Um, and this allows us to track its progress through plant tissue. So in order to use this as a tool to probe for plant traits that affect microbial colonisation, we wanted to see whether it infects barley um, and to determine whether there's genetic variation to colonisation um, of this pathogen in barley tissue. So we've developed a leaf assay um, which uses detached leaves um, and we inoculate the leaves in different spots on the leaf, leave it for three days and after three days, you can, um, using a fluorescence microscope, see the colonisation um, uh, extent in the leaf tissue. So we've identified a really susceptible variety called Baroness um, and a really resistant variety called Manchuria. Um, and you can see the stark contrast in um, extent of colonisation between these two. 
Um, we've come up with an infection scale, so depending on the size of the lesions, we can quantify the amount of um, colonization by the pathogen. Um, and we are collaborating at the moment with the Sainsbury Lab in Norwich, who luckily have done a cross between these two um, varieties. So um, they generated F1 plants, which were selfed, um, and these gave rise to 100, oh, an F2 population, of which we have screened 188 um, uh, individual plants for their resistance to Phytophthora palmivora. Um, and these have been genotyped. And what we've found is that there seems to be a, a QTL contributing to resistance on the short arm of chromosome 5. Um, so this is really promising and we're looking into um, trying to um, enrich our genetic map with markers um, and to identify this trait further. And I mentioned previously that Phytophthora palmivora also infects roots. So again, we've looked in barley to see whether, we can, whether it infects barley and whether we can de detect genetic variation um, to the pathogen colonization um, in roots. So we've developed a root assay um, which takes four days. This is a resistant variety and this is a susceptible one. Um, and an infection scale to go with it. So you can see the, the browning, progressive browning of the um, susceptible variety roots over time. Um, and we've also quantified pathogen biomass. So by qPCR, you can um, determine differences between susceptible and resistant varieties um, at a very short time after you've inoculated with the pathogen. So overall, um, we think we've uh, found a pathogen with which we can um, use to identify plant traits that will control filamentous microbe colonization. Um, and it's a single pathosystem, so it negates the, the use of um, different pathogens in different tissues. Um, and because Phytophthora palmivora can infect both shoots and roots, we hope this will be um, able to facilitate not only below ground studies, um, which have been lacking, but also comparative root shoot studies as well. So um, I'd just like to acknowledge my lab. My, um, my boss is Sebastian Shornak. Um, these are the members of my lab, of which Felicity has um, have been instrumental in screening the F2 population. And I couldn't have done the QTL analysis without Matt Mosco from the Sainsbury Laboratory. Thank you very much.